In today's video, I'm going to show you a couple different styles of blur transitions that you can accomplish in Premiere Pro. This video is a part of a series of videos where I'm showing you how to do the different transitions that I've made for my preset pack. So if you want to learn how to do them yourself, here we are. Let's start with a basic blur transition. For these techniques, I'm going to be utilizing an adjustment layer, and you can create one by going to the new item icon in your project bin, clicking that and going to adjustment layer. Make sure that the width and height are the same as your sequence settings and hit OK. Drag my adjustment layer onto the timeline above the two clips that I want to have the transition for. And one thing that I like to do to guide me while I'm creating this transition is make a marker right where the transition point is between the two clips. So I move the playhead between the two clips and don't have any clips highlighted and hit M on the keyboard to create a marker. I'm going to highlight my adjustment layer, go to my effects window. Underneath video effects, blur and sharpen, we have Gaussian blur. You can apply the Gaussian blur by clicking and dragging it onto the adjustment layer. You can also just double click the effect or you could click and drag it up to your effects controls menu. It's Premiere Pro. I know there are so many ways to do things and that's just a couple of them. Move the playhead to wherever you want the transition to start. And next to blurriness, we're gonna hit the stopwatch or toggle animation. That creates one keyframe. Then you can click the little marker to go to the spot in between the two clips. Click this little diamond to add another keyframe and then move your playhead to where you want the transition to end and create one more keyframe. Now move your playhead back to the center by clicking the little arrow and you can click and drag on the number right here to up your blurriness or you could just type in a blurriness. So what I might do is a thousand and I'd say that's a pretty basic blur transition right off the bat. Now if you're unfamiliar with how these keyframes are working let me hit this down arrow and right here you can see the linear movement. It goes from zero all the way up to a thousand and then back down to zero and this basic structure is how we'll accomplish the rest of the transitions in this tutorial. Since we already have the Gaussian blur set up on the adjustment layer, let me show you how to do an exposure blur. Now you could do this with something like Lumetri, but I prefer using levels because I think it looks cooler. So in your effects window, let's look up levels. And again, you can click and drag it onto the adjustment layer. You could double click, you could click and drag it up, whatever you wanna do, get it onto your adjustment layer. The parameter we wanna adjust is RGB white input level. So toggle on animation for that. And notice that I'm, putting it directly underneath my first keyframe, go to your marker. And here's where you want to go all the way down to zero or near zero so it gets completely white. And then again, we're going to go back to the default setting. So right where this keyframe is, I don't need to click and drag this back to default. All I need to do is hit the little reset parameter button and that will restore it to its default setting. And now we have an exposure blur transition. You could go in and reset these parameters to make it longer or shorter, but that's the basic concept of doing an exposure blur. Now I'm gonna remove those effects from the adjustment layer and let me show you two ways that you can accomplish this kind of pixelated blur transition. I already have my blank adjustment layer on the track and in the effects window underneath video effects, stylize, we're going to drag on mosaic. Toggle animation on for horizontal blocks and vertical blocks. You can go all the way up to 4,000 for both of these parameters, but I find that it takes a little too long when you do it that way. So let's move the playhead to the beginning of the adjustment layer. And I'll start with something like 300 here on both settings. And then that will go all the way down to 10. So you get this really blocky texture. And then I'll go back to 300. Now it's important to note that this is only occurring on the adjustment layer. So when your playhead isn't over the adjustment layer, you won't see that effect. So you get something like this. And the last way to accomplish this kind of pixelated blur effect is using cell pattern. Now this is an obsolete effect, but I still think it looks cool. So I wanna show it to you. So in our effects window, I'm going to look up cell. Like I said before, it's an obsolete effect, but you can still use it. So I'm gonna drag this cell pattern onto the adjustment layer. And it may look like a whole hodgepodge of things at the beginning, but over here, underneath cell pattern, I'm gonna to go to crystallize, take my sharpness down to zero, and my disperse down to zero. And you can see that we get this kind of mosaic effect like before. The thing I like about this one though, is that it reminds me of uh, baseball Simulator 1000 on Super Nintendo. There was these transition effects that mimicked this kind of zooming in and zooming out with pixels. I'm just a big, well, I'm a big Super Nintendo guy, as you can see, and uh, kind of has a space in my heart for 
pixelated blurs. So let me show you how to do it. So the parameter that we're going to adjust is size and then move it over here, go all the way down to two. So as it approaches the marker, it will get more pixelated. And then I will go over here and go back down to two. Now in between, we can make this as big or as small as we want. So if I really wanted to like zoom in on these pixels, let's do something like 741 for no apparent reason other than I'm doing it for this tutorial. And let's see what it looks like. <laughs> oh man. So you like, I don't know the practical uses of a zoom blur pixelated transition like this one, other than the nostalgic value of that just reminding me of old video game transitions where it kind of goes like this. And I think that's kind of cool. If you are interested in utilizing my preset pack to do blurs like this, you wouldn't use an adjustment layer. All you would need to do is go into your effects window and underneath my preset pack, you would take something like blur A, put that on clip one, and then take blur B, put that on clip two, and click, and it's automatically there for you. To show you that exposure blur, I put exposure blur A, and it's automatically there for you. And here's one of those pixelated ones as well. That's just utilizing it with my presets, but obviously I've shown you how to create them for yourself, whichever one works best for you. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up if this was helpful. On the screen, I'll leave a playlist for all the different videos showcasing to you how to do the different transitions from my pack. I'll be supplying more videos to that playlist as they come out. Until next time, my name's Javier Mercedes, and I hope you're out there living a life of abundance. Bye.